um, assessments and explorations. Um, it also can have college and scholarship research ability, and you could also manage college application process, um, use assessments and explorations. Um, it also can have college and scholarship research ability, and you could also manage. So, uh, sorry, am I having some inter interference, Valerie? You sound okay. Okay, <laughs> all right, sorry. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Well, Josephine, you stepped in just <laughs> at the right moment. <laughs> Here you go, Josephine, take it away. Thank you, Margaret. And yes, hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Josephine Ho, and I'm one of the school counselors at Aragon, one of four, as Margaret mentioned. And I am oversee the students with the last name L-I through R-O-O. -O. So for any families tonight uh, with if your last name, if your student's last name is L-I through R-O-O, I am your counselor. So um, nice to virtually meet you all. And if you have any questions after this presentation, you can certainly um, send me an email and then I can actually go over how to contact us later in the presentation. Um, as Margaret said, you know, the counseling department is represented here. And I will say that the other two members are really um, key individuals uh, that make up two separate areas of our um, department. So what I will do is now trying to share my screen, sorry about that. I think I have to share screen first before I present my presentation. Share screen. Here we go. Let me click on present. Okay. So, uh, yes, yeah, so tonight. Uh, we're, I'm joined by two individuals to help you go through navigating through the college application process. And the two individuals with us tonight, as you see on your screen, is uh, Lori Tizak. She is our career and college and career advisor. And we have the awesome wellness coordinator who oversees the wellness, excuse me, I keep on saying counseling, who oversees the wellness center at Aragon. And that's Julian Ma. And so we're going to start off with Jill, who's going to talk to you about the mental health and basically just kind of walking you through about what your student may be feeling and thinking as they're trying to navigate this whole new era of college applications. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, as uh, Josephine said, my name is Jillian Ma. The students call me Miss Jill, and I'm one of the wellness counselors here. Um, and I know you came to learn about all the college application processes and financial aid and all that stuff, but we're going to start with the feelings person because uh, there are a lot of feelings um, on the family side and on the student side. And so I'm just going to talk through a couple of things that I wanted to, um, you know, share and, you know, potentially even get some feedback for. Um, but the first thing I just wanted to do, um, if you wanted to put in the chat and um, the rest of the panelists can uh, maybe monitor the chat, um, how is your child feeling about the college application process? Um, we at the Wellness Center um, hear a lot about this. Um, we hear a lot about all of the, um, the stressors and struggles that students have, um, but I'm just curious to know how um, what are you hearing at home? What are some um, things, some just like one or two words that your uh, student might be um, experiencing if you want to put those in the back? Do we have the ability to chat? Ah, there we go. Uncertainty, yes, absolutely. Overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Stress. Mm -hmm. Mm 
And it's really, it's overwhelming for the kids and it's, it's a lot for the families because I'm sure that, you know, and it varies of course by depending on what you're doing, where you're applying, how many places you're applying for, um, all the different situations, but it really is, um, you know, the, it, it really um, takes an effect on, on the entire family. Um, so let's go to the next slide. And feel free to, you know, continue. If you'd like to put something in the chat, um, please feel free to. So um, funny little, funny little comic, um, because sometimes it feels like we've been preparing for this um, for years and years and years. So bedtime story, uh, use News and World Report, Guide to Narga's Top 500 Colleges, Chapter 1. Looks like she's maybe in about kindergarten. So um, we've been thinking about this for a long time. You know, this has been on the forefront and I'm sure that pretty much everyone on this call can't believe that they're actually going through this process, whether it's your first child or not. Um, it's always kind of a, a daunting process. Um, and again, as I said before, um, you know, my team, um, you know, myself, Mr. Max, Ms. Araceli, and Ms. Nikki, those are the names that you've heard of or haven't. Um, we are the ones that provide the tissues and uh, help the students to work through some of the academic um, pressures and um, feelings that they're having about college. Um, the college process, again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of our students feel an immense amount of pressure. And so um, year after year, students will come to us with this, um, with these stressors. The interesting thing is, is that a lot of our students may come um, saying that they're struggling. And then when you look at grades, they may have A's and B's. And so a lot of students, um, you know, and we, and of course we see everyone in a great and huge variety, but a lot of students really feel um, that they have to get perfect grades in order to get into the perfect college, in order to get the perfect job and have the perfect life. And if you think I'm joking, that is not a, co a conversation that I'm exaggerating <clears throat> about. And, um, you know, we kind of laugh about it, but a lot of times there still is that sentiment that I have to get this right. I have to get this perfect. Um, we also have a lot of students who are straight A students. And um, those students also come in with a lot of anxiety because it's like a house of cards. You know, I have worked so hard for the last however many years. And if I get a B, it's going to destroy my whole plan. And so, you know, it's a lot of trying to help students through those anxieties and um, trying to sort of, you know, our work is trying to help them through that. We want to advance the slide, please. So these are some of the things that we hear. Um, so why am I telling you this? Why am I sharing this with you? I share this with you because as many of you know, sometimes teenagers don't always share everything. Um, and I think that through this process, it's, um, it's important to kind of maintain your communication with your student, with your child, to, um, to make sure that you are continuing to connect. Because again, this is a very stressful situation. Um, it's an exciting time and it's a stressful time. Um, so, you know, students may share with us, I wanna do well, but I'm exhausted all the time. And I just feel like I can't focus on it. Sometimes students who previously had a lot of motivation for school, all of a sudden they're like, I don't wanna do this anymore. Like it's just, it's becoming very overwhelming. And sometimes motivation um, kind of starts to slide a little bit. That is a very normal response to having such a, being in such a kind of a stressful situation. Um, Kind of what I said before about grades, I feel like nothing I do is good enough. Um, you know, and we kind of just want to always encourage that, you know, we, we understand that sometimes you might feel that way, but that there is more coming down the road. Um, again, that conversation I have with students, if I don't do well, I won't get into a good college, I won't get a good job, and the chances of success are really low. So um, a lot of the work that we do with students is really trying to you know, to kind of create some perspective of, you know, just because you choose one thing in college, it doesn't mean that that's going to be what you end up at. And that there are many, many different ways to get to one, to get to the same goal. Um, sometimes I feel like we have um, a lot of tunnel vision with how our students can be successful. 
And, you know, something I try to, and my team always tries to kind of plan for students is that there are so many different ways to get to one goal. And we do, you know, we have a lot of conversations about if parents are going to be disappointed in them. So, um, you know, sometimes, you know, students have anxieties about like my parents compare me to other people. And a lot of it is unintentional. Um, I think that it's something that, you know, we all do sometimes, but that they are listening and that, you know, they notice if you're, um, if someone is talking about another family member that got into another college um, and there's some, you know, there can be some anxiety around that. Everyone else knows what they're doing, except for me. Um, this is a piece that I always really try to uh, emphasize that um, there's a lot of competition within the students. And so, you know, tests will come back and there's a lot of like, I did get this, what did you get, did you get this? And there's a lot of competition. Um, which I try again to normalize with students be like, yeah, there is a lot of competition. This is a very competitive area of the country. And so there's um, just a lot to work with and a lot to normalize with that. And again, um, everyone else knows what they're doing except for me. Um, and then just really kind of fears about disappointing their family. Um, of course, this is not, you know, every student that we talk to, but, you know, I share this with you because this is a theme that we, um, that we do see a lot with students being very stressed out about the college application process. And I think that it is important, even if none of these things are actually true realities at home, I think it is just important to check in with your child, with your student about some of these things. Even if it's just simply like, how are you doing? How is the application process going? How, is, how does it feel to have all of these different pressures? Because if you think that, you're, that, that your child may never say any of these things, I would just encourage you to check in anyway, because even if they don't share anything with you, they know that the door is open. And so I think it's just, it can be very helpful and reassuring for them. Um, in our recent Panorama survey, um, the thing that uh, was most stressful to students, um, 85%, which is um, 1,319 students, the thing they were most stressed about was school. And so it is, um, it, is a, it is a really big part. And so, you know, again, um, ask. Ask how they're doing. Um, listen, very, very important. You know, we have so much advice to give, um, but try, you know, but listening is important and then reassure them. Um, remember whose future this is. Um, sometimes we have ideas about like what we wanted for them, what we thought was going to be, um, what we thought was going to um, provide them success. And I think sometimes it's just good to kind of take a step back and just, you know, like remind, all, all of us remind ourselves, like, this is, this is what they want. This is what their goals are. Um, and really kind of uh, reframing what success, um, the success mean you know, getting a PhD and having a really high paying job and then that equals happiness because those are conversations that I have with a lot of students. Um, or does success mean something else? Um, because at the end of the day, um, emotional health is really what's going to promote achievement. And again, achievement can mean a lot of different things. Um, but, you know, the anxiety and the worry and the sadness over time with some of our students does really sink in a lot. And so we want to make sure, you know, that and all of us at the school are really working to support students through this, this difficult time and through these stressors, which again is really exciting, but also can be very difficult. And we want to always empower you and support all of the families to in turn support your students. Okay. And so Josephine, if you have anything to add to that or any perspectives that you might have, because I know you have a lot of these conversations as well, please feel free. Yes, um, everything you said is right. I don't know if you noticed, like I was nodding the whole time. Uh, and I think it might be safe to say that maybe some of our families who are on this call tonight can, have, can resonate with, with the message. Um, and so because, you know, both of us, both of our departments definitely work really closely with families um, and we see these students every day, um, everyone from those who are 
considered like the valedictorians of our school, um, as well as those who are struggling, but still when they're struggling, even if they might not be meeting um, a certain GPA passing classes, there's still a lot of stressors on themselves and thinking, especially that they are failing themselves, failing their family. Uh, and as everyone, all the family knows, you know, we just came out of a pandemic or we're still in the pandemic, excuse me, but we came out of distance learning or back in school and where a lot of our students are relearning what it means to be in the classroom and there's and meeting new friends, being on campus for the first time. Uh, so all of that definitely adds to that stress. And then to realize that, oh, wow, in just a few short years, and depending on where the student is right now, they might be starting college next year when they just came back from distance learning. So a lot of transitioning is happening. So um, as I'm talking, as I kind of just kind of started talking about the different families on our call, I'm, you know, as you can see on their screen right now, it says, you know, all of this is okay. We're all here to support you. Miss um, Jill is here, uh, Mrs. Tzak, Lori Tzak, who is our phenomenal uh, college and career uh, advisor. She's been meeting with students and starts meeting with students even from freshman year. Um, also, the good news is that all of your students talk. Everyone talks to, to each other. I know families definitely talk to each other as well. So we're all learning uh, through this whole process. And all the families being here, just know that we're all here. We're not going to, uh, you're not in this uh, by yourself. And so lean on each other and just know that just working together, like Jill just said at first, it's like ask your student how they're doing and then use that as, as the starting point to then ask them like how you could help them through this college process. So I would also like to ask um, our families tonight, if you could put into the chat, just if you could share with us the grade level your student is in right now, just so we have an idea of the families that are joining us tonight, whether they're in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, or 12th grade, if you could place that into the chat, that would be great. Great, looks like we had a lot of juniors tonight. Okay, great. Tenth graders as well. You got a freshman family here. It's great. We have, yeah, so it looks, sounds like all grade levels are represented here. And I think um, I might have seen a senior here. Um, and it's not too late. And we will go over that uh, if you want to know if we could still apply to colleges this year. And yeah, absolutely. There's over 2,200 colleges nationwide and many of them accept applications all the way till May of next year. So we got loads of time. Great, thank you so much families. Um, so it looks like we do have a great uh, range with primarily uh, 10th and 11th graders tonight. So along with uh, the leaning on each other, um, asking for help. What has Aragon um, done to help support our students? So this year already what we've done is uh, we've gone into many classrooms and done presentations. So we so the first class that we had to hit up were the seniors because there's so many deadlines that were coming up um, uh, specifically for our uh, California public institutions, the UCs and the CSUs, as well as wanting to help them to write personal statements. So that's why we went to the seniors classrooms first. And so we spoke with them. Uh, we also have uh, did presentations in our ninth and 10th grade classes, which you may have received a message through Parent Square from our um, one of our other counselors who told you that we made we did a presentation about all of the classes, uh, enrollment, as well as um, 
a little bit about the college eligibility, how to stay eligible for college. And we also uh, hyperlinked that presentation to that email. Um, and that was sent to you from Parent Square. And that was only to our ninth and 10th graders. So we met with them during their PE class this year. Uh, Ms. Tizak has been meeting with students uh, coming in, dropping in at all times uh, during the day. And Mrs. Tizak, you could just jump in at any time um, if you want to talk you. about, yeah, if you want to talk about what you've done so far in terms of meeting with students. Okay, so um, students will email me or walk in and say, can I have an appointment? And so we... Um, uh, definitely schedule appointment right away as um, it kind of says farther down. We're there um, Tuesdays and Thursdays during flex. Um, we're meeting with students, but it, it does go all day long. I can start meetings at eight in the morning and still at 4 p.m. I'm having meetings. So your student or our seniors are coming in and having those meetings and we're doing, it's a lot of one-on-ones and I think they really, um, they like it because I'm able to give them the information I give them, they're, they're very understanding of it. And so I have to say this year in particular, our, our seniors with their Naviance have really followed through with making sure they've gotten everything connected. So I think one-on-one -on -one meetings are really um, valuable. Um, we do virtual visits. We um, started virtual visits last year during the pandemic. And then this year, um, the di it's district wide, and the um, colleges sign up. And they um, this year they were um, we uh, weren't wanting to pull students out of class for virt for visits. So they are they were during lunchtime, and also some uh, colleges scheduled after um, school at uh, three thirty five, and they are online and they are waiting for any student to come in and talk to them. Um, so there was a schedule for that. Um, and of course, students can uh, tour colleges and universities virtually. So um, we always talk about those. Um, we do put out a monthly college and career newsletter. Um, so you can um, find it online now. And we update it uh, monthly. And that's um, uh, Ms. Mawala, our scholarship and financial aid advisor and myself. So we put it together and then we take um, all the different college and career news um, information that comes to us and um, get it into the newsletter for you. And then we, um, uh, as I said, I meet with your students during um, flex and lunchtime. And as I said, I can start, we start at eight in the morning meeting with students. We did have the district college virtual fair um, this year and it was, it was actually very well attended and farther into the presentation, we will have um, a flyer with actually the links because we did record it. So there will be the links to all the different schools that spoke and you would be able to view those. And then of course we have our um, uh, San Mateo Union High School District uh, financial aid workshops that are going on. And there are um, at our school in particular, Ms. Mawala um, every, I think it's usually Wednesday, but she was bumped to tomorrow. She is having a financial aid workshop at lunchtime in the NPR. So she's been doing that quite regularly. Um, so um, those are just, you know, uh, some of the things that we do that uh, to help your student um, with the college process. Um, okay. Anything else, Josephine? No. And actually, um, I will try to see if I can get also a link for the um, where to find the college and career newsletter. Yes. It's actually on our yes. website. And I apologize, I'm having, because I'm sharing my screen, I'm a little bit weary about being able to open another screen to get that link. So I will definitely try to get that soon right. um, towards the end of our presentation. But if, just so you know, um, there are, the college and career newsletter is updated every month and you can find that on our Aragon website under school counseling and then under uh, college and career. And it's right there on the home, on that one page under college and career. And we do have some other great um, recorded presentations on there too. So you yes. might wanna look at some of those. Yeah, great. And here is that flyer for the college fair that uh, happened in October. 
And then when we send out this presentation, we'll definitely share, you could click on that college fair video link and it will bring you to a drive, a Google drive yeah. of all of the different videos or excuse me, all of the recorded presentations and how there was over 80. There were over 80 and they are grouped in three. So if you're looking for a school and you don't see it, you might want to go in and uh, look to see, you can't quite see all the names of the school of when there's the three in each um, group, you can't see all three names. So you have to kind of go and hover over it to see if uh, there's a school in there that you would like to see. One of the beauties about having everything on Zoom now that you could pre-record, and yeah. especially when you are a student who's interested not just in one school, but in multiple schools. And this is just a great time, a great way to learn about all of the different campuses. And I will say that those college tours, online virtual college tours have definitely improved yeah. because of this as well. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. almost as if you're on campus with them. Right. So as we're kind of going through into the college application process, uh, we definitely want to start off with keeping all of these things in mind that it's about fit. Okay. It's about the student. Mm -hmm. Where do they see themselves at? They're going to be living there. The parents are not living there or their family's not living there. But what about the student? Do they see themselves at a small, um, in a small city, urban? Uh, maybe they want to be somewhere a little bit more secluded, you know, so location. Uh, where in the United States. Um, also, in terms of, you know, learning about uh, what kind of academic supports the school, the college provides, okay. not just academic support, but what else, what are other services and supports that they have, okay? And also, we want to keep in mind that, yes, colleges do cost a lot, Yes. Okay. And the, a lot of things are, are rising, right? Tuition is definitely uh, rising. Right. However, FAFSA, which we will talk about in a little bit, mm -hmm. that stands for free application for student aid. Uh, yeah, no, federal. Is it student? no, yeah, federal free, aid. Yeah. The free application for federal student aid. Thank you. I remember <laughs> I was missing one of those uh, letters. So, yeah, so when you filled out that form, if, for example, if Lori and I are both seniors in high school right now, we would both fill out the FAFSA and apply to the same, same schools, but both of us will have a different tuition right. because it's, it depends on how we complete the FAFSA. Okay, um, so we always tell the students is that what you see online on the school's website is the sticker price. And all the families here know you never want to pay sticker price for a new car. So the same mm -hmm. thing, you don't want to pay sticker price for, right. for a college. And that's the only way that not to pay sticker price is to fill out the FAFSA and see what kind of support, financial support that you can get from filling out the FAFSA. Yes. And then what we also don't want students to, to do is to really apply to what we would call like the quote unquote brand name yeah. brand schools. Um, and I'm not going to say any of them, but we know in our heads right. what they are, we you know. Um, and because also remember in terms of, um, you know, we, we put that uh, cartoon in the beginning about mm -hmm. the top 500 schools, you know, US news and reports, they come out with that every year. Uh, and that's something that I know a lot of families do look over. And one of the things I do want all of our families to realize that part of the ranking system, they include things that really have nothing to do with, with how well the school will support your student, such as alumni giving. Right. You know, it's great if they have alumni giving, um, but does that in turn uh, equate to the the education that your student will receive, the support your student will receive. So again, ranking doesn't equate quality education. And do you have anything else to add to that? Ms. No, Tina? that's really good. Um, as far as fit goes though too, uh, your student has to look at their major. So um, today I had a student sitting with me and she has a specific major and a school that she thought, which actually name brand, um, turned out not to have the major she wants. And so would you go to that school then? 
you know, so then she kind of had to shift and say, oh, yeah, you know, so definitely um, not all schools have the same majors. Mm -hmm. So um, those are things you'll be looking at. Um, and here's our, our CSUs, our California State Universities. As you can see, there's 23 of them, and they go up and down the state of California um, all over. And as you can see, a lot of them are in Southern California, but we have some great ones up here. And actually, um, Humboldt, Humboldt is turning, um, or already has turned into a polytechnic. So that's a school that we have students looking at now. And we have a number of teachers who've graduated from there. So they're, they're very proud that, um, that their um, school is now going to be considered a, a polytechnic school. Um, we did um, link the name of the of this, uh, CSU, California State, so that when you go in and um, look at this again, this presentation, you can just uh, click right to the uh, CSU um, site. Um, they have a minimum of 2.5 GPA, and that is as long as you've completed your A through Gs. Um, you can have no Ds or Fs. Um, they don't take letters of rec. They don't need a personal statement. The application was is available every year on October 1st, and they are due on November 30th. Now, um, we're quite lucky because San Francisco State is our regional campus. So they consider our area their local service area. So if your student has the 2.5 and the A through Gs, um, they will uh, be accepted to San Francisco State. Um, we are also very lucky that Cal State East Bay has sort of adopted us also. So those two schools, um, your student keeps their GPA at, if their GPA is a 2.5 and they've done their A through Gs, they will um, get SF State or East Bay. Now, remember we talked about major, so you know we'd be looking at um, the major they would be taking, but those are two great schools. But then we have students who get accepted to all those schools all over um, California. So definitely it's a great system. They turn out a lot of great uh, majors. So um, it's a system that I think all students should look at. Yes, absolutely. And I just want to point out that uh, some families might remember where the Cal States used to be a minimum of a 2.0. So yeah. indeed, that is yeah. not a typo. They no, did yeah. increase. Yes, they did increase their GPA eligibility to a 2.5 GPA. And to be a little bit more specific, especially for our 10th and 11th grade families, yeah. the GPA for the A through G courses is counted for during their 10th and 11th grade only. Now, I always get a question from our freshmen say, oh, wait, Ms. Ho, does that mean that I don't need to do oh, yeah. my ninth grade or my 12th grade? And Unfortunately, no, because um, the colleges do look at all four years. However, to meet minimum, G, uh, minimum eligibility, it's only between the 10th and 11th grade year. They calculate that GPA, and then it must be at least a 2.5. Okay. Great. So we did have a question. A parent would like to know what the regional, what is a regional service area? So the CSUs have kind of, um, what they did was they took areas where they are located and um, they give those students, um, so students who, someone who would be applying from uh, down in San Diego to San Francisco State will have to come in with a higher GPA. They give, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Um, preference? I don't know if you call it preference. Well, yes, there are um, there are local, not the local context. Uh, it is local context area. So they are their local service area. Excuse right. me. Right. So mm -hmm. you're if you live in a service area. So San Francisco State is a, a, we're in their service area. So all of our high schools that live in uh, this area and around in the Bay Area. Uh, uh, San Francisco State is their local school, their local CSU. So mm -hmm. they can come in with a 2.5 mm -hmm. as long as they have all their GPAs, as we said, sophomore, junior year. Um, 
and uh, they will accept them. As I said, East Bay adopted us. So if you've not checked out that campus, it's a lovely campus and they are giving us the same service area. Now you couldn't go to San Jose and say, I live in your service area because we don't. So they wouldn't give us that same um, preference of the 2.5, okay? Great. Mm -hmm. And I, there's the UC system. And one of the <laughs> things that our students always uh, make a mistake on is being yeah. able to apply to UC UCSF. So uh, just as a reminder, San Francisco is crossed out because it is a medical school. Right. So your student can apply four years later to medical school if they would like to. Right. So similar to um, the CSUs, the UCs have a minimum 3.0 GPA, again, A through G courses, no Ds or Fs as well. Uh, there is a personal uh, statement similar to what you would do for the private schools, but they call it the personal insight questions, um, PIQs, and students need to choose four out of eight questions. Right. No letters of recommendation, which is great, yeah. okay? Um, However, sometimes colleges do ask for it, but that's at a, I believe, uh, Mrs. T's eyes of 1% that they ask. It, it, yeah, it's random um, mm -hmm. and they, might, they may ask for it. It's, they say it's optional, but we always tell students if it's optional, do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and it's Berkeley that does that. So um, um, yeah, so, yes. so uh, across the board though, mm -hmm. no, uh, no letters of rec. So you could see on the rest of the slide, the application when it opens. Uh, however, even though it's open uh, on <laughs> August 1st, you actually cannot submit the application until November. So when it comes time for your student to apply, you could just review, log in, make an account uh, just to review it uh, and maybe and actually start working on it. But you will not be able to submit until that range of November 1st through the 30th. Right. Um, there is a question in the chat that asks, so how do you calculate GPA if last year it was all uh, credit or no credit? So you actually would not be using that towards the GPA. So for example, if you, if your student was a 10th grader last year and you earned uh, all credit courses, great. You, you see that it's on the transcript. So the grades that would be computed for the GPA would only be used for the 11th grade year this year. Okay. Right. So what happens if you currently um, have like a, a freshman, right? Uh, and who is planning to apply uh, to the UCs or CSUs, would they be able to have like uh, have a easier time or a leg up because they have actual letter grades right. uh, to apply to UCs or CSUs. And that's actually untrue. So you, it's the UCs and CSUs in partnership with our Department of Education of California has a, agreed that they will accept all classes who, that earned a credit. Okay, now if it's a NC, no credit, then that equates to an F. But if you receive that NC, they will not view it as a D, nor will they view it as an A. They will just receive that you passed the class. They will use it to as a fulfillment of the requirements. Right. Um, so it would be really dependent on the actual letter grades that they earn during 10th and 11th grade year. Right. Okay. And for those UCs, just so keep this in the back of your mind, don't let your student wait until November 30th to send that application because those systems bog down every year. So right now we are just putting it out there to our students, get that application, those UC applications out days before November 30th. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Okay. Um, then we have our private and out of state colleges. Um, and this, um, so these colleges, there's, um, there's even over 700 colleges now. Um, it was closer to um, 900, I think. The last I looked the other day when I was in with a student. Um, so the common application is a uh, consortium of schools that came together years ago and decided to put this platform together to have um, 
one application, kind of like the UCs where they have their app one application and then you apply to all the schools. Well, the common kind of did that also. So the student goes in, they sign in, they make their um, portal, and then they, um, they start listing their schools. And as they list their schools, each school will have what they need and want and what their dates are um, on their um, page. Um, once again, no Ds or Fs. So um, definitely um, we are telling your students that all the time. They do, um, for a common app, they will want a personal statement or an essay. <clears throat> and many colleges have supplemental questions. Um, today I was looking with a student and when we looked at this particular school, they actually had eight questions besides the essay it showed that they wanted. So you, the student really has to look to see what needs to be completed. Once again, if it says optional, we say do it. And any school will say that, um, do, do the optional work. Um, uh, letters of recommendation are needed. Normally it's two teachers um, and they start asking, um, students start asking usually uh, I, end, of, uh, end of their junior year um, to their teachers. Uh, then they ask and they will need one counselor. So um, I'm not sure how we're doing it next year, but I think it will be by alphabet and I'm not positive. Um, so you would be going to the counselor that you've been working with under your alphabet. You, um, the student must sign, it's called a FERPA waiver and it's in the application and you only sign it once. So this is a common policy that um, students are not allowed to see the letter of recommendation before it is sent to the school. And this is so that the teacher isn't writing it um, with the student standing there and uh, maybe giving them um, added words to put in the, um, which um, years ago used to happen. And now that they have this um, waiver, the teacher writes it, sends it, and then it's up to the teacher if they decide to share it with the student. Uh, the deadlines for the common vary because every school is different. So we've had students who are applying through the common who have had an October 15th due dates all the way to uh, yesterday. Yesterday, I actually saw a January, uh, I'm sorry, a July due date. So um, some schools um, have set dates and they're very now, or they can be like I said, in, into July. So they definitely vary school by school. Um, we use Naviance to interface with Common App. So, and it's a very simple process and the student will do it. Um, you're usually gonna interface, uh, if you're using the Common with your Naviance, either probably at the end of your junior year when you start looking at your schools and adding them into the list on your Naviance, or um, like we'll start doing it in August when we come back. And that was pretty much full time that I had students in and we were just um, interfacing, making sure the uh, waiver was signed. So, um, and we have step-by-step -step instructions. So these are the things that the common will want. Um, there are application fees for all of this. So we do tell students to really be, um, cautious on schools that they are applying to um, because this process can get very expensive. Can they apply for a fee waiver? Yes, they can apply for fee waivers. Um, we are asking our students um, this year in particular, and I think last year also, a number of students who were eligible for free and reduced lunch didn't apply because the, the district is uh, giving the food is free. Um, but we need students to get onto the free and reduced uh, free and reduced lunch so that we can get them the fee waivers they need for all of these um, applications. And if they they didn't get onto the uh, free and reduced list, um, tell them to come in and talk to us, and we will see if there is something we can do to help with the application fees. So um, definitely be aware that there can be fee waivers. And some of these colleges give fee waivers. St. Mary's mm -hmm. is known for giving uh, waivers to apply to their schools so you don't have to pay. So definitely um, be, uh, be conscious of fee waivers.
Great. Here's another way to uh, save money is called the WUI, the Western uh, Edu or excuse me, Western Undergraduate Exchange. Uh, so for families who may think, you know what, I think my student wants to uh, get out of California. And there's many schools on the, from Alaska, Hawaii yeah. islands, all the way to the Dakotas. Yeah. Uh, that is what uh, many schools are under this consortium. And what they do is basically want your student. They want California students. We're blessed to be in California for many reasons, but two of which is our strong CSU and UC system. So many of our students end up wanting to stay here because of the two systems. However, Although they are strong, there are other strong, equally as strong uh, colleges and universities outside of California as well. So as you can see here, there is a chart that shares, that shows you the cost savings. Okay, so right now the University of California, the tuition is at $14,100. Um, and just to, just to oh. let you know, this is something that just came through this year as well. Mm -hmm. The UC uh, Board of Regents has approved that when a student enters in the UC for the first year, they will pay the same tuition mm -hmm. for the four years that they are at the UC. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which is great. So you kind of mm -hmm. lock in that price yeah. once you enter because oftentimes the UC has increased tuition while the student is in school. However, now they agree that once a student enrolls during that one year, they lock in that price until they graduate. So hopefully within four years, sometimes it might take a little longer, maybe five, six years, but, hopefully, um, but they do guarantee it for four years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to the WUI. Uh, so uh, if you, without the WUI, okay, if you applied without it uh, for the University of Nevada, Reno, which is, an, uh, I want to put in a little, uh, um, I guess, uh, comment about them is that they're really coming up uh, as a really strong uh, site, especially for <coughs> engineering. Yeah. Uh, they have a partnership with Tesla. Um, so they're really strong in electrical engineering as well as um, uh, uh, um, wh what is the program called? Uh, it's not, it's like automotive because of their their connection with Tesla, but um, yeah, they brought, they have a whole school of engineering program at the University of Nevada. So without the WUIs, 22,000, okay, almost 23,000, um, but with it, you're paying half the price, a little bit more than half. So, which is, uh, or excuse me, a little bit less than half, which is great. And then University of Colorado, now it's the Denver campus. Without it, it's 30,000. With it, you, it is, also cut in half. So it's a great um, cost savings. And University of Colorado Denver is one of the other campuses. The main campus is Boulder, and that is not on the WUI. Okay, so um, there might be some schools that are not listed in the WUI, but it is listed it is located in between Alaska and the Dakotas. However, um, I uh, uh, encourage all of you to do some of the research to see if there's a school that your student might be interested in, and especially if they are part of this WUI um, partnership. Mm -hmm. So we ask, we have a parent asking, what are the requirements and qualifications for this? For some of these schools, if you go on and you look at the list and your student sees schools that they like, for some of them, it's actually just applying. You know, it's, it's so that's fairly simple. For others, it's probably filling out a little more paperwork for them. So it's uh, it's definitely worth looking at. We do have students who look at schools and choose schools because of the WUI. So. Mm -hmm. And I will say the application process has simplified. Yeah. Prior, uh, you would have to indicate that you want to apply under the WUI or yeah. Um, yeah. something else through the financial aid. Um, but now I've had a couple students who came to t let me know that when they're applying, it just automatically said, hey, yeah. you actually uh, are eligible for yeah. the WUI pricing, which is great. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, the RAC schools. We love the RAC schools. So these are the regional association counselors of California. 
Um, these are schools all over the United States. Um, we, we put the link to their directory and um, I, I, they're just really good schools that you might not think of as a name brand, but then when you start going in and looking at the majors and even some of them, the price or um, uh, the GPA, their GPA acceptance, they're definitely schools worth looking at. Yes. And so they are promoting, um, they're out of state schools. So once again, as Josephine said, we're so lucky that we live in California because we have these great systems in California, but then there's these out of state schools that really want our students and are enticing them. So um, definitely click into the regional, to the RAC and see the list of schools that they have um, and great majors. Some of them have really good majors. And also included is international schools as yeah. well. So international schools that um, now that I feel like more and more students are open and willing yeah. to explore. Right. So uh, we have uh, school, schools of Australia, Switzerland, right. um, Paris, they're all uh, also listed. Now, not all the school colleges and universities in those countries are listed, but definitely there's a nice group of international schools that are listed on there as well. And then they have their counselors in California. So if your student needed to talk, to, wanted to talk to a RAC counselor, um, they're located here in California. So they're easier to contact. Do that. Go, ahead, go for it. Lives. The colleges that change lives. So there was a gentleman many years ago who just um, decided he was going to take on researching some of these. Um, he called them little diamonds in the rough. These wonderful little liberal arts colleges um, all across the United States. And um, it used to be called the, the 40 colleges that change lives. And now their list has grown. Um, so when you click in to look at the colleges that change lives, these are just uh, colleges, small liberal arts. They're known for their support to students. They're, they're, they're holistic, um, they're, they're community oriented. Um, and the list does uh, change every year. They add schools. We have, um, California only has one, I believe, and it's St. Mary's in Moraga. So it's very close to us. So they're small supportive schools and um, they are definitely considered diamonds in the rough. So take a look at those, very good schools. Yeah, there are excellent schools and many of them are if you're, if you're the um, family that likes to look at in terms of ranking, right. I mean, you could see Reed. Reed is an excellent right. college right. Um, and it's definitely up there in the rankings and many other schools are too that are listed in colleges that change lives. and. Uh, what makes this list so special is that they have such a strict re um, requirement mm -hmm. um, in order to be listed, listed to yeah. have to be on this, uh, to have this award or recognition of being as a part of uh, colleges that change lives, right. uh, because it it has to be one, not only is it holistic and you know looking at the student beyond as a number, but they also look at class sizes. Yeah. And they also look at the how many times a professor or a advisor meets with a student, mm -hmm. counselor to student ratio, and what do they do to help students to move on mm -hmm. um, in, in college and develop them as not just as you needing to get a job, but you as being a, a good, outstanding citizen. Right. Uh, so I had a, a question in the chat and that said, you know, my student doesn't even know what they want to major in. Well, one of the colleges that's listed here is called Evergreen State College. Oh, yeah. And that's such an amazing school. I have uh, a student who ended up going there because again, she was so interested in um, film and music and photography. So definitely in the arts but also interested in building and engineering. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to merge those yeah. two right. completely different types of majors together? You can't do that at a UC. Mm -hmm. You can't do that at a CSU, mm -hmm. but you could do that under schools that are colleges that change lives because you will work with a professor mm -hmm. who will work with you to create your own major. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And I mean, how cool is that? Uh, and additionally, you there's also a lot of programs where students can have um, internships and uh, uh, they work with you to find a job afterwards. Um, what is the ratio? What is the percentage of students finding a job in their major or their interests? All of these colleges has to be over 90% in order to make that um, colleges that change lives. Mm-hmm. If you look at the percentages, if you're asking for the UCs or CSUs, I don't know it at the top of my head, but I'm I'm pretty sure that it's not that high of a statistic. Mm-hmm. So because again, um, there's not a lot of support when you are moving into the workforce after graduation. Um, so yeah, just definitely a great uh, short list. And for you to, if you're thinking about, hey, my student is a little bit um, unique and wants to find that really uh, comfortable and inviting campus where um, it will really help them to do the transition to college. Well, the California Community Colleges.edu is a website put together by It was put together by the state of California. And it's really, it's uh, very comprehensive. Uh, You can do all your research, as I said, college, career, and financial aid. Um, So your student could go in there and start, um, open up a portal and actually start um, listing things, but they can do, um, it's great for research. So, and as it, it says, it enables, it enables you to track the progress of students if they start going in and putting their information in. So um, definitely it's a great search tool for California colleges and our private schools here in California. Mm, testing. <laughs> testing is, uh, as many have heard, uh, may have heard, is kind of really up in the air. But what we do know for certain is that there are some schools that are still uh, accepting SATs or ACT scores. Uh, but at least for our California uh, schools, they are currently test blind. So what is test blind and what is test optional, right? It's just, um, it, it new vocabulary words mm-hmm. that in this huge puzzle of, <laughs> of college uh, applications. So test optional, it basically means that if your student decides to take the SAT or ACT, um, great, and you could submit the scores, okay? Um, it's not gonna be required for admissions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but if you want to submit the score, uh, go for it and it, it may or it may not help. Um, they're, they will review it. Um, and I will say most of the time, if they say it's test optional, then like Mrs. Tzak said in the beginning of the presentation, right. if it's optional, you should probably take it. You should right. do it. Or if you right. have one, submit it. Yeah. If you have one, submit it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but we do know it's hard to find uh, test centers, which is right. another reason why many of our colleges are moving towards the test blind. So, so test blind is based literally that if you submit a test score, that school will not look at it. They will rip it up, shred it, toss it. They will not be added to the file. So I had some students who asked, well, the UC said they're test blind this year and I have like my PSAT score or SAT score or uh, something from before. Should I just submit it in just in case? No because they're not even going to, um, they're not even going to review it, uh, mm-hmm. nor will they even have a place to put it anywhere. So um, yeah, so that's the, di- the main difference between test optional and test blind. So as uh, I, ex- I said earlier, test UCs and CSUs are test blind for this upcoming, the fall 2022 admission cycle. So currently, if any of our senior families who are on the call tonight, your student will not need to submit, uh, nor should they submit if they do have any scores, SAT or ACT, and do not need to worry if your student does not have it because they're not gonna be reviewing it whatsoever. Um, Private colleges and universities, that however is a little different and it varies from campus to campus. So um, I believe uh, Mrs. Tzak, you told me today or was it yesterday about Stanford, 
Stanford's going test, they're test optional, but they just declared they'll be test optional again next year. Mm-hmm. So then, you don't have to submit. Yeah. So even our, what you would classify as, you know, our Ivy League schools, right? Um, and I believe Harvard okay. as well. So they are all moving towards that direction and maybe perhaps depending on um, the applicant pool and after reviewing data for the next couple of years, um, I, I'm assuming that we're probably moving in that direction where it's going to be mostly test optional with possibly towards test blind, especially if the UCs and CSU are um, really um, committed to that stance. So community colleges is another great option. And here are a couple that you may recognize because they're in our backyards. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a really strong community college uh, group here of three campuses, but we also have one in San Francisco that's awesome across the Bay as well. Um, So, you know, there's just so many, there's 110 of them across the state of California. And it is definitely a great and affordable option instead of going straight into a four year. Uh, Community colleges, uh, in some ways, actually might uh, help students to get into the four year of their choice, okay, if they go there first. So for example, there is a program called the TAG Agreement, Transfer Admission Guarantee. And if you complete the first two years and you sign an agreement during the, I believe it's the end of your freshman year where you sign that agreement, Mm -hmm. upon applying your sophomore year to the college or university that you signed the agreement with, you're in. Because on the agreement, it says if you meet the minimum GPA if you take these classes and you complete all of them with the grade point, um, that grade point average that is required, you don't even have to worry about whether or not you get in. It's mm-hmm. again, it's a guarantee. And it is a guarantee with all of the UCs except for Berkeley, LA, and San Diego. Mm-hmm. However, you know, even though there's no guarantee with that, right. uh, the UCs actually accept up to 70% of applicants from a community college. So that's super high. If you're looking at Berkeley admissions right now, we're talking about less than 10%. So your uh, options to, or excuse me, your your chances of being admitted to uh, the UC of your choice is much greater if you choose, go the community college route. Mm -hmm. And of course, our, can't forget our CSUs, they're also amazing. Uh, there are 23 of them and you can sign a tag agreement with most of them. Mm-hmm. I want to say the only ones you can't sign a tag agreement with would be San Luis Obispo. Mm-hmm. Is um, Mrs. Tisa, was there another campus? I think if that might've been the only one. Yeah, I think it's, that's the only one. Okay. Slow. So, um, but it changes every year too. Yeah. So um, for those who are uh, ninth, 10th grade families, 11th grade families, they might, they, that might change in the following years. Exactly. Um, but, and even if you don't want to go to a four year, what if you have a student who's not interested in college, right? Or at least not for the long haul, for the four additional years of schooling. Uh, there are amazing programs. There are certificate programs. I actually have a former student who attended UCLA and was a international business major was accepted also into their graduate program at UCLA, but just realized, nope, that's not what I want to do. And so she decided to go to a community college and went for another year, got her certificate in, um, in a, oh, what is the word? What is the name? Is that app? Is that app design? Uh, that they do. And I believe either CSM or Skyline also does and also build that program at their campus. So, yeah. yeah, So what she does now is this, uh, she is a, she works uh, at a startup um, that create, and they have an app and she's the one who oversees um, basically the um, customer interface and, and, and the way that it works on the app. I'm sorry, my, my uh, language vocabulary for that uh, sector is not that great. Um, but uh, so 
basically my long story short bottom line is that uh, a four year college doesn't necessarily mean that's exact that's where you're going to head to because even at UCLA she was not able to one land a job that she wants uh, and uh, two she ended up having to go to a community college to find out where she really wanted to do right. okay <clears throat> um well, I'll, so a, a community college so CSM um, you can do electrical pathways. Um, they have a, their cosmetology program is really well known. They're dental hygienists, um, fire academy, and administration of justice. And these are just a few of their paths. At Kenyatta, you can do respiratory therapy, interior design. I, I was just talking to a student the other day about uh, them probably attending Kenyatta for this. Um, 3D animation and video game art. You know, um, and then look at Skyline. There's where we've got the early childhood development and their automotive technology um, program is outstanding and it's very well known. Uh, also their cosmetology and their fashion merchandising, but they're really well known programs. So these are just a few of the things that your student could do at a community college. Lucky students. And then we have a comparison chart here of um, the college application requirements. So as you can see, they're all online. So for your students, 99.9% .9 of their applications will be online. Um, the private schools are the ones that are looking at SAT or ACT scores. And, you know, a lot of them are test optional now or test blind, but um, there are some that are still looking at them. Um, personal statements, uh, is your, your private schools definitely, and then your UCs are the PIQs. Um, and then letters of rec, private schools, and official transcript, private schools. And so when we say official transcript, that means that we would be sending their freshman through junior to the private school and then um, moving on to their mid year, which is their first set of senior year grades. And then eventually, whichever school your student would land at, um, we would be sending their final graduation transcript to. So um, yeah, this is a, shows all the requirements, right? As of right now. Um, and then we have financial aid. And so this is where um, your student would be talking with um, Ms. Mawala. She's our um, wonderful financial aid and scholarship advisor. And um, so, all schools that you apply to, whether it's a four-year or a two-year, um, those schools are gonna ask your student to apply for the FAFSA, and that's the free application for federal student aid. And the website um, is .ed.gov. So what we don't want, um, and we haven't had many, any students that I have heard of uh, in the last couple of years, to go to like fafsa.com because that is not the federal government site. And if you get on a fafsa.com where they ask you for money to um, get the form or to complete the form, you are on the totally wrong site because um, there are some you know, scrupulous people out there who um, are trying to scam people. So definitely use the fafsa.ed.gov. Honestly, it's, it's not a hard form to fill out. Um, the CSS profile is used by um, many private schools, but you have to look to see what private school wants it. The CSS profile comes from the college board um, and it's a form that was put together for a certain group of private schools where they're gonna ask a little bit more information than they get from the FAFSA. And this is because the monies, when you uh, go, when you are looking at a school that's on the CSS profile, they may have some endowment funds set aside and they have strict criteria in order to give the money, um, be able to award the money to students. So this is an extra form. So you would still be filling out the FAFSA and then you would be filling out the CSS profile. Um, this form does cost money. This will be one of the only forms that we would ever say to your student if they are going to fill it out to fill it to pay for it. Um, it costs the form costs per school. I believe it's 17. It was something like $17 per 
per school, and you would be filling out um, a number of questions that you won't be filling out on the FAFSA. So you need to go onto the CSS profile and check to see if your student schools that they're applying to are on there. Know that no CSU or UC is on that list. Um, and it's uh, going to be your private schools. Um, so definitely check that one. Here's uh, Ms. Mawala's financial aid night. Um, so this will be district wide. And um, um, they will be presenting on to, uh, Thursday, December 2nd at 6 p.m. Um, so save the date. Um, at, um, the December 2nd will be in Spanish. Um, and our presenter will be from Skyline. And the February 10th um, will be, um, CSM will be coming and presenting. So um, definitely um, you may want to attend one of these financial aid nights. And this is only for our current senior families. Yes. yes. Okay. So current yes. senior families yes. only. Yes. So, but remember, Ms. Mawala is your scholarship and financial aid advisor. Okay. So here we are to Naviance. We've had a couple people asking, when are you going to get to Naviance? So um, um, as one of our hostesses told us that um, Family Connection is a uh, Naviance uh, program and it's a comprehensive online college and career planning tool. And we, um, our district uses it for all their students um, and parents can have their own portal. So if you are interested, we will, um, we will get my email address. Um, you can email me and I will send you back your um, parental um, code number to set up your portal. All of our students have already been registered for Naviance. They are registered as freshmen. And so all of our students are using it. Our freshmen, our seniors in particular are really using it because this is how we um, send all of your students' uh, documents to their school. Um, so we have um, the, as we get you your information and you go in to sign up, um, it's it, the front page will ask you which school would you like to log into and you could um, put the zip and then below results will show Aragon and you click on that. Um, then you'll come up to the welcome parent guardian page and you will um, put your username in and password. Parents um, go in through username and password. Our students go in through continue with clever. So um, Parents do not use continue with clever, only students. So you would be putting a, a username and password in. Um, I also just wanted to say real quickly that our during our classroom presentations to the ninth and 10th graders during PE, they went through the whole Naviance. I walked them through it. So if for, um, for families who are a little bit like maybe not as uh, tech savvy and understand how to log in, just ask your student to yeah. log into yeah. Naviance and then yeah. they could show you what they're exactly. doing because we walk them through it and all of them already did one of the assessments here that is listed. As you could see here, when they get to the home page there at the top screen, that's a, a screenshot of what they will see. And right. then when they click on self-discovery, there are all of these different um assessments mm -hmm. that they can take. So all of the ninth graders completed the Strength Explorer. And then uh, all of the 10th graders uh, took the Career Interest Profiler. Okay, so that, so we had, and I think Mrs. Tzak also got several questions about this too, about majors and how to choose. Right. So this is where Naviance comes through and do the assessment with the Strength Explorer and the Career Interest. So based on your strengths, these are the type of uh, careers that you should look into right. based on your interests. Look at these careers, right? So um, this is just a way to help them to start thinking. Right. Um, so then we go, so we had, um, can we go back to that other page for a minute? Sure. Thank you. Um, so as Ms. Ho said, this is our, um, the top one is our opening page. So definitely where you see read more, click into it um, uh, because it gives you more information. It drops down and gives you more information. Um, and then for the um, self-discovery page, yes, as Ms. Ho said, 
this is a way, if you do all of these, if your student does all of these assessments, um, it kind of is the complete circle and it gives them all the information they need um, to pick that major and then the colleges that have the major and where they're located so that they get um, the full information that they need when they're choosing their, um, their majors and their colleges. Okay, we can go to the next one. Um, and then um, I just tried to do a screenshot of every front page. So this is the college, the top one is the colleges page and I know that they're hard to read. Um, so um, they're really hard to read, huh? Um, so this kind of gives you um, what the students are, or no, this is careers. I'm sorry, the top one is careers. So it is really gonna talk to your, um, come back and give your student information about all the careers all the way down to the amount of money that you make although that's we're hoping that's not how your student is um thinking they'll be successful but it will come down to even the county whatever that career is the amount of money the student could make in that uh the county and that goes across the united states so it's um very detail oriented in there and the the beauty of it is is it saves uh the information so your student doesn't have to keep redoing it and redoing it and some of those assessments they can retake um some of the assessments no because they feel the answers that they gave are never going to change but there are some of those assessments that I can reset for them to retake. And then the uh, bottom screenshot is the colleges. And that's really where our seniors are working right now and where our uh, juniors will really start working. And this is where um, if you have your parent portal, you'll be able to see, you know, apply to colleges, colleges I'm thinking about um, and colleges I'm applying to. And that's where the seniors and I are really, really working um, right now. Um, and then you'll be able to do um, find your fit. So your student goes in and answers um, a few questions and schools will, will pop up by um, what they wanted. As we said in the beginning, a low, the locale, their um, major, sports, size. So um, doing these assessments will really help them. There are also maps in there that you will be able to look at, and they are based on our students' history for their last three years. So you will be able to go in and um, click on a, um, a map, and it will show you all the schools that our students were accepted to and attended for the last um, three years, and it's, the Arag it's Aragon community. Now, remember, this is self-reported information that our students give us, um, and it it. it it was, um, it is now, SAT scores aren't in there anymore. So it, it will show based on GPA. No names are ever um, placed in the map. So you'll be able to see history of where our students go, which are our favorite colleges, which schools get the most applications. And you can see, we go all over the United States and into Europe. Um, and then the last, um, the top one is the planner, and that's where your student can go in and set their goals, or maybe they want to set some things to do's that they want to do. They want to do um, the um, some of the assessments that maybe they would be taking next year. They want to do them now, so they set their to do's, or if they have any tasks they want to do. And then if you go over when you're in your Naviance to the very right hand side, you'll see the about me tab, and that's where they can um, they can complete a resume. And the resume builder is really, it makes building that resume really simple. And it gives them about 10 different um, types of resumes they can build. And then it just takes them through each question so that they can list. So um, building a resume, um, and then once again, setting goals, or maybe they wanna start a portfolio. So, and then at the bottom is where we place our surveys. Um, so if a, a teacher has a survey or for our seniors, they have to fill out um, a counselor recommendation survey, they'd be completing that. And then there's a game plan. So they can set a game plan for themselves. And um, as a parent, you are able to go in and view this. You cannot do the work for the student, but you can view it. So um, it's um, a great way for your student to do their 
and for you to help and advocate their um, college and career um, research. Yeah, thank you. And um, I do want to just share this one bit that I forgot to share is that how many colleges and um, should they apply to? And that's a very yeah. individualized uh, question. Um, some might say, I just want to go to a CSU. Some might say, I only want to do private school. But I think the main thing is that you want to make sure that you have some safety schools that you for sure meet the minimum requirements. Yeah. And for example, you will uh, be able to have a high chance of getting in, which would be like San Francisco State because we have a partnership with them. So if you meet the minimum requirements, you will get en entered, uh, you will be granted admissions. So that would be a safety school. A target school, maybe a UC where you do meet the minimum requirements um, and you also fulfill some of the um, their GPAs in terms of, um, uh, the, the average GPA that that campus accepts. So that would be a target and a, and a reach would be the ones where um, have very high or excuse me, very low acceptance rates uh, where you do meet the requirements. However, uh, because of their low acceptance rates is really difficult to, to get in. So that would be your reach. So at the most of the schools that a student should apply to should be in that middle center, which is the target. So you should have at least maybe five if that's the number that you would want to. Um, definitely you want some target schools and you have to have at least one safety school as a backup. And, you know, oh, sorry, go ahead. No. no. Oh, okay. Um, but I, you know, all of this is just, like we said, we started off with it being, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of different emotions that are happening uh, with our students. Uh, that's how we started. And in the middle, we just talked about a whole lot of different, options and just what to do. So um, I don't know about you, but if I was listening to this for the first time, I could feel a little bit overwhelmed, but just know that we're all here to uh, support you. Uh, so just real quickly, uh, here is a list of all of the counselors that you could check in with. Uh, so the last name, if um, based on your student's last name, that uh, that is the uh, counselor that they have. Okay, that yes, that your student has. Okay, so again, I uh, oversee students and families with the last name L I through R O O. But you do have Miss Sanguinetti, Mr. Alicott, as well as Dr. Cervantes, and you know you have Mrs. Tzak who presented with us tonight, and then we mentioned several times of Mrs. Mawala, who is our financial aid and scholarship advisor. And then lastly, I wanna give, uh, be able to allow Jill to kind of close us up and uh, remind all of us the importance of a family and being supportive of each other. Yes, and so we, uh, we opened with feelings, so we're gonna close with feelings. And um, like uh, Josephine said, this is a massive amount of information. I am always and so incredibly amazed at how our counseling staff and how Lori and Ms. Malala and how everybody has so much information. Um, and I'm, I'm just always really appreciative to all the, the wealth of information that they have because I know it's so important to families. Um, so this is an excerpt, which I will do a dramatic reading of, don't worry. Um, I, this is an excerpt from Where You Go Is Not Who You'll Become, which is a book that is written about, it, the tagline is the antidote to the college admissions media. And it's basically a kind of a different perspective on how difficult and stressful this process is, but how flawed it is as well. And, you know, there was a lot of mention about how, you know, we have, you know, uh, name brand schools that everybody thinks and, and everybody believes that is the only place that my, my students should go. Um, and that, but, but that, you know, the amount of donors does not necessarily um, equate that support of education. Because um, at the end of the day, um, all of this is important and exciting, but it is also not a measure of your student as a human being. There is much, much more to them than just the actual college they go to or the grades that they get. Mm -hmm. um, and if your student doesn't know what they want to do or they don't have a major right now, I'd be willing to bet that at least 50% of the people on this call studied something in school and are doing something different. Mm -hmm. It was a journalism major with a Japanese minor. We'll change that up later. <laughs> um, 
So this is a letter that um, a parent wrote their child. So on the night before you receive your first college response, we want to let you know that we could not be any prouder of you than we are today. Whether or not you get accepted does not determine how proud we are of everything you've accomplished and the wonderful person that you've become. That will not change based on the admissions officers, what they decide about your future. We will celebrate the joy wherever you get accepted and the happier you are with those responses, the happier we will be. It's your work as a person, a student, and our child is not diminished or influenced in the least by what these colleges have decided. If it does not go your way, you'll take a different route to get where you want. There is not a single college in this country that would not be lucky to have you when you are capable of succeeding in any of them. And here's the part where our children will always be five years old to us. We love you as deep as the ocean, as high as the sky, and all the way around the world and back again and to wherever you are a good perspective to keep. So thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us uh, tonight. And I can stick around for a little bit if there's any questions uh, about anything about um, our how to support our students mentally uh, and as well as, you know, uh, applying to colleges. So I will stop sharing my screen now. And um, I do want to also share that there was an amazing presentation that the PCSO did last, uh, last month, I believe. Uh, and it has both a representative from the UC CSU's um, a private school. And uh, so please view it on our uh, YouTube channel, right, Mrs. Arbizu? <laughs> It, we had a little hiccup with our, our, when we recorded that presentation, so I still need to upload it. So it will be there in the next, let's say by Monday. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so how is Naviance different from College Board? I just received that as a question. Or is, Margaret, did you want to make it, sorry, do you um, want to close out your meeting? Sorry. <laughs> or, or maybe not, or should I just start answering questions? If anybody wants to stay on, and that's, that's great, and I'll stay on to answer questions. Um, how is Naviance different from College Board? Uh, um, Naviance is, uh, a, it's, is a service that the school district is providing for our families. Right. Okay, so it allows you to research uh, uh, research uh, campuses, colleges, and really how it's more specific to Aragon is that scattergram that Mrs. Tizak explained that it uses three years of data to show you where our students went for the last three years. College Board cannot do that. Yeah. So the similarities of it is that yes, College Board will allow you to research schools, give you uh, links. They, I, I'm not too sure if they actually have uh, assessment tools on um, my future, which is a part of College Board. I see a shaking of a head from Mrs. Arbizu. Yeah. So um, I'm saying, no, uh, there's no assessment. So therefore that's why it's great that Naviance has that tool, assessment tool, especially if you're a student is just kind of hands up in the air, not knowing what to do. Um, Many of the college visits are during class times. Um, I do not believe any of them happen during class times this year, right? They're, they're during lunch. Um, and unfortunately students normally, some you know students have either go in and see teachers or so it's, it was hard because we did not wanna pull our students out of class to do, um, to come and see presentations. So they were scheduled during lunch and some of them, a few of them, scheduled after school. Um, so yeah, there's nothing during class time though. Um, I would say prior to COVID, yes. <laughs> that is, yeah, prior to COVID, we had them all day long rolling mm -hmm. in and out of school, but not anymore. It's during lunchtime or after school. So yeah, there's no, um, no class time missed. Um, and we can't um, unfortunately force them to go see them. So it would be um, their choice. And as I said, a lot of students, they have their clubs and they have um, you know, all kinds of other activities they're doing. So 
um, they're missed, but go to our college fair website and click on that and you'll see a lot of the schools that came for virtual visits presented at the college fair. Ms. Ho, I'm just confirming that College Board, the big future site, does not have any right. assessment. You have to you have to choose like what career area <laughs> you're interested in exploring, right. but there's no, yeah. 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 Um, so I do have a question. Like if they if you don't come to um, uh, one of the sessions at lunchtime, um, you know, the college sessions, with that be uh, an issue. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand the question, Chris, and I'm, I want to make sure that I get this correctly, that um, are you asking for the college visits or specifically in terms of what we do to help our students um, during lunchtime? Um, because all of the counselors and Mrs. Tizak are were available brunch, lunch, and after school. And if they need to see us uh, during a class, we ideally we would like to see them during maybe a TA period, a teacher's aid period. Um, but we can make an appointment with them to see them um, during class time. We always try to make ourselves available. Uh, but in terms of the video visits, the college campus visits that happen during lunchtime. Uh, I will say many of them are recorded, so um, they could actually view it online if they can't go to the college visits. Um, and so, and we shared a link earlier. If you could look in the in the chat, um, our principal actually clicked the uh, placed the link of the college fair. So even if they didn't go to the college visits, many of our colleges are rep actually attended that college night. We had. 80 plus college visitors. So they could, uh, your, you, the family and the student, you know, maybe it would be kind of like, instead of like a uh, Netflix night, maybe it would be a college fair night where you could click through all the videos and watch together. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Mrs. Arbizu. So she placed the link in the chat again. Yeah. yeah. And I will always, you know, if I have a student that comes in and says, I missed the virtual visit at lunch, I really love that college. I, we, I will get them the, the representative's contact information. And so, you know, these representatives really want to talk to your students. So um, I'll get the email address and the name so that they can get in contact with them. Yeah. And I understand where some families is talk, talking about um, sometimes private schools in particular do track whether or not a student yes. uh, shows interest, right? They call it demonstrated interest. Yeah. Uh, and that's really from school to school. Yeah. Um, I, there are some private schools that says, uh, we don't track, sure. you know, we, yeah. it does not make a difference in whether or not they get into our school. Yeah. Some schools do actually. Right. Uh, and, and unfortunately that would be a really good question when you are doing that research to the co colleges to ask them, does demonstrated interest count towards your admissions. Right. And again, I want to emphasize, this is private schools only. Really? None of our public schools even have the ability to right. track because they just here. have too many hundreds of thousands of applicants. Right. So right. it's really our, more of our smaller uh, mid-size right. private schools uh, that do track that demonstrated interest. But again, it's just one small fraction in the yeah. huge picture of what makes your students right. so special and right. have them um, be a good candidate for their campus. Yeah. Well, Sophie, I have a question for you. Sure. Yeah, um, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, you and Lord stated earlier, uh, sorry, you and Laura stated earlier the ambition the college admission um, now in senior years, say um, to UCs, it's only 10%, but if students are uh, going to the CSM, not CSM, the community college route, mm -hmm. it increase the art of admissions up to 70%. Is that indeed a very, very valid and true statement? I did go through the community college route and. I was able to transfer to UCLA, but um, obviously back then and now things have changed. So I just wanted to know a little bit more about that transfer 
admission process and how it improve, increase the art of admissions or acceptance? Well, I will say that our, the, the people at the state government is working very hard and putting a lot of emphasis and not just emphasis, but actually pressure on our community colleges to answer why the transfer rates were so low. Okay, and there's articles about that. So if our families want to look it up, definitely you could read that. Um, so there is a very intentional uh, policy that's happening at the state level that is basically pushing our community colleges to uh, re, whether to reinvest or re-examine their structures that are in place to really help that pipeline to go to the four-year college route, because that's really where the foundation of the community colleges were created, not only to it uh, ha allow them to transfer to the four-year colleges, but of course we are well understand about our uh, 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 adult education or our certificate programs and giving students more than one option than the four-year colleges. But our four-year college admissions rate or uh, transfer rate were pretty low. So they um, questioned it and there is an intent and there is a lot of policies that have been placed in the last, actually, I would say, oh gosh, in, in the last several years. And you're really coming to see a lot of those um, policies come to flourishion uh, and seeing that then that's why the, the percentages of the transfer rate is definitely increasing. That sounds great. And we're encouraging to our students. So it's, it go back to what Jillian mentioned. Don't be stressed. Don't get stressed. Um, don't put a lot of stress to your students. If they cannot make it this round, there's always a second college, second chance from the community college. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great note to end on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Josephine, Laurie, and Jillian. We really appreciate your time and all the information that you are sharing. It's very, very beneficial to us community parent communities. Uh, thank you again for your presentation. All right, everybody. Goodbye.